Man, check this out, guys. We gotta do an MPG run with this, but I want to introduce you guys to Jordan here. Hey. This guy works at Larry H. Miller here in Sandy, Utah. If you are in the market, he's a newbie too, so <laughs> he needs some sales. Reach out to Jordan. You wanna give me your cell phone? Yeah, 801-386-6441. Awesome, you heard know. it here. This might sound a little crazy, but I had a dream about this video. And they have a Rebel here, so I figured this would be the perfect time to do the video. On the right side, I have a AEV Prospector, 40 inch tires. This is the most ridiculous overlander in the world. And this is Ram's answer to off-roading for the HD segment. This is the first ever Rebel 2500 HD. And let's just say, if you add the AEV to this truck, oh my goodness. Like seriously, that will look so stinking good. And here's why. This truck's about 114,000. And if you were to add this package, assuming that the price has not gone up for the AEV Prospector, it would be a hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars so it's not much different and there's a lot of amenities that you get on this truck now special shout out to larry h miller they do have both these trucks available for sale they also just sold an aev a silver one a few days back so this is the only one they have left let's take this on the ride so we can see mpg acceleration all that good stuff if you're new to my channel i just got this draggy that will record zero to 60. it also does zero to 30 and quarter mile, but I don't really have the room to do quarter miles. Now with this truck, I may have the room. I also have this guy. So let's go ahead and reset the trip. Now this truck has 40 inch tires, 40s. Looks good too. And I've only driven these trucks one other time, but we're gonna kind of see here how it's gonna do for fuel mileage. And that's what's important, right? If you're gonna be buying something like this, that might be the case. Now this truck is kind of heavy too. You're gonna to lose a little bit of payload. So just keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and reset the fuel mileage right here. I'll do it at the stop sign. And let's go. So in and around town, this truck feels a lot higher than what you would feel in a regular Ram HD. So the 40 inch tires are obviously gonna give you a height increase and this truck does have a two inch uh lift as well it's through Bilstein, and overall i like the presence that it has on the road like you get a lot of looks in something like this because it's definitely a lot more different from what you see with other ram trucks and i love the fact that it has those really wide fender flares too now we're about to get on the highway soon and i'm trying to debate whether i want to do the zero to 60 up here or i want to do it somewhere else so we'll see here in a little bit so like I said we'll set that up and then we'll see what it does I think this is gonna have a hard time because you have these huge tires and they did not re-gear this truck so I think you would need at least a 456 or something like that because of how tall these tires are all right here we go I was not expecting anything less than 10 seconds here at 60 in this big old truck. I am very surprised. Now, it is warmed up obviously, and it doesn't have a full tank of diesel, but I'm very surprised with these big tires. It actually took off really well, so maybe you don't have to re-gear these trucks. But I will say, you're gonna take a small hit on fuel economy. Now, I'm gonna run a nice, long, um, ride here on the highway and we'll do like a loop back around to the dealership you can hear the tires at 70 miles an hour I'm running about a hair under 1500 rpms let me switch camera so you guys can see what I'm talking about here alrighty so I'm running at 70 miles an hour and I'm under 1500 rpms let's get up to 75 that should put us right there so we're right at, I mean, we're still under 1500 RPMs. Wow, I wonder if these taller tires are messing with the RPMs, because they don't re-gear these trucks. But 
as far as the speed goes, they do recalibrate it. So that's gonna be accurate too. So you don't have to worry about that. But overall, I mean, this truck handles like a big off-road pickup. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's not uncomfortable, I hope I'm not saying that. It's very comfortable, but when you turn the steering wheel, you feel a lot of you know, sway from these tires. These tires are tall, but they do give you a lot of softness, so it does eat up a lot of the bumps in the road. And the steering feels great. I mean, it doesn't feel like this is an aftermarket build. Like, I think AEV does a great job making their um, upfits feel like factory. And this is no exception to that. So I guess AEV did change the tires on their builds. They were using the Coopers, but now they're using the Toyo Open Country Mud Trains. And these are gonna be a 40 by 13 and a half, 17 inch wheel. And upgraded suspension as you would expect. Those are the Bilsteins. And then check out your front bumper too. Really great setup here. They have the come up winch up front. Have your pods. It's a really nice build. And this is the rear. Big mud flaps. Fender flares with the uh, wheel wheel liners upgraded. Corner light there. Parking sensors. And then this off-road bumper does protect the side of the bed. Really nice build. We are at the midpoint. I was here for about a minute or so. 11.8 is where we ended off at when I stopped. But we're gonna go back to the opposite direction now. And let's check out some of the sound in this truck because that's gonna be important for some people. These tires are definitely noticeably louder, but I've never driven a Rebel, so those tires, we'll have to see how they do as well. I'm doing about 70 miles an hour right now. About 66, 67. It's a little bit louder on the window, about 70. About 65, 66 out back. So we'll have to remember those numbers for the Rebel. We will be back in a little bit. And yeah, I'll show you guys what the feeling comes is when we stop. All right, so we're getting off the interstate now. Here's where the temperatures are, 168 for the trans, coolant's 194 and 197. So I don't think that it's gonna make much of a difference with these tires, especially on the highway. Now, if you're doing a lot of stop and go, these tires might make the truck a little bit warmer on the transmission because you're lugging a little bit more weight down there on the drivetrain. So all in all, we're pretty much back. I'll show you guys where we are for fuel economy and then we'll jump into the Rebel. So here are the numbers for the AEV. Gross accelerating up front 6,000, 6,040 for the rear, 10,000 pound GVWR. And because of the upfit, they did get it reweighed. So now they're looking at 1,605 pounds of payload capacity. And here's some tire specs for you guys. We're pulling in now. Yeah, when you hit bumps in this thing, it's so much nicer. So much nicer. So this is the stopping point right here. 13.7 miles driven and 13.7 MPG. And that's about 20 minute drive too, a little bit over. So let's go ahead and jump into the Rebel to see how it does. We're currently inside of the Rebel. I have to reset the fuel mileage here. So let's go ahead and do it now. Done. This does have the digital cluster and this is a high end Rebel. So this probably has the level two, level CF. They change names all the time. I can never remember, but I'm sure this truck has that package and has the, what looks to be the real leather seats, has the center console, 12 inch display. It is loaded in the digital cluster. I must say I like, I like it. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get on the highway and we're gonna see what this bad boy's gonna do. 
This is my first time driving a Rebel, and this does have the unpopular tires in my opinion, which are the Goodyear Wrangler dirt tracks. Now, so far that I've been driving this truck, I have noticed that they're not as loud as they are on the Silverados. I've probably driven seven or eight of those trucks, and every time I drive one, those dirt tracks are just so loud. But we're gonna get up to highway speed here in a second, and I'll be able to confirm whether or not they're louder. But let's go ahead and check out the zero to 60 up here, and then we'll check out some of the RPMs with this setup. All right, let's go. surprised by that it beat the AEV but not by much so having 40 inch tires doesn't make much of a difference I wonder if they regeared that truck I gotta look at the window sticker for the outfit I feel like this was gonna do probably like a second better for some reason but it did not now this is a 23 and that's a 22 but that wouldn't matter though because they're the exact same comments it doesn't matter hmm but oh well, there's still one. I'm not saying anything up against that. It's just I thought this truck was gonna do at least a full second better. I was actually expecting that AEV to be like in that 10 second range, 10 and a half maybe. But wow, the standard output Cummins did better than a Duramax I did a test on actually. And this actually matched the new Duramax I believe. So go back and watch this video. That's actually kind of interesting. Now these are different spots. But the time of day, the temperatures are pretty much the exact same as both tests too, so interesting. Hope you guys can see the RPMs down below. Let me see if I can give a better look of them. There you go. So, it looks like I'm like right at 1500 RPMs. Let's get up to 70. Okay, so I'm still under for sure. 75. So it's pretty much the exact same. I wonder if they re-geared that truck. Because the RPMs, I guess when they recalibrate the speedometer, maybe it changes the RPMs too. Because they're definitely exactly the same. Not much difference at all. We're about to get to the midpoint here in a second. And then, like I said, we'll go the opposite direction. And we'll see where we finish off for fuel economy. So here are the numbers on this truck. 6,000 pound gross accurate rating up front, 6,040. And this does have a lowered gross fuel quote rating at 9680. And then here is the payload. And we're gonna go ahead and get off the interstate here. Looks like the light's still red. So it's pretty much the exact same as the uh, AEV. But here's where we are. So we're considerably better. Now this does still have off-road tires so that's why i did this test because i wanted to see what the difference would be so you're definitely better off with obviously 30 i think these are 32s maybe 33 somewhere in there they're in the ballpark of that but like i said guys we're gonna go ahead and head back the opposite direction i'll show you guys the temperatures and all that good stuff i wonder why these tires are not as loud as the 18s they still have a little bit of road noise but they're not bad every silver auto that i've done a test on brand new pickups they're so loud but these are not loud actually these are probably almost the same noise as the goodyear trail runners which are my favorite ones i have on my gmc but these are great i mean at 75 miles an hour couldn't tell the difference really i'm really impressed with this rebel this handles well. I mean, the tires, the suspension, obviously this has the bill stains, so the bill stains are great. You can get air suspension if you like, though. That is an option, and that will make the ride just a little bit softer, I think. But overall, um, this is a $92,000 truck. It is expensive, very expensive. And they do lower the GVWR, as you guys saw. And that's probably like the only downside to Rams right now. It's just they're kind of sticking to that 10k or less now but let's go ahead and check out the temperatures here they did switch up the gauge summary a little bit
but I still like what they've done. So you have your coolant trans and your battery. So your coolant, it looks like the coolant's about the same, but the transmission is about three degrees cooler. And then here's your oil at 185, 50 PSIs. So all in all, um, this is pretty much the same as the AEV, so it doesn't change too much. I'm really glad I did this test because I really was wondering about the tires and how it would affect the transmission. It doesn't affect it that much, and it doesn't affect acceleration either. My um, drag is pretty darn accurate too. I mean, that's the best one you can get so far. But overall, um, both trucks are performing well, and as you guys can see, now that we're back on the highway going about 70 miles an hour, I'm actually about to get up to 168 degrees on the transmission, so it's pretty much operating the exact same. Pulling in now. You're going to be surprised with the fuel economy too, guys. I'm very surprised. Oh, wow. These tires did pretty well with that bump too, compared to the 40s on that AEV. So here we are. 13.9 miles driven, 17.6. MPG and then 16 minutes driven so we didn't have as many stops I think that's probably why we did a little bit better here but all in all I mean I think if the rides were the same maybe I would have got maybe 14.3 maybe on the AEV but this truck rides really good I think most off-road pickups do because of the suspension and if you're in the market guys be sure to check out Larry Tamir this truck is available like they have two I think they have this color like this almond green and then they have like a white one too so what did you guys think about that video i think that the aev is one of the coolest outfits i've ever seen and i would love to chase one of these and get videography because i think this thing on the road looks menacing and when you think about the new rebel imagine this truck with this outfit that would look so good like really good you already have the front end of the power wagon you have the sport performance hood and then from there all you have to do is just add the 40s the lifts and everything else and i think it would look so stinking good but like i said guys special shout out to larry h miller here in sandy utah they do have these trucks available and as you guys would expect most of these things are being discounted now so you're not paying msrp anymore which is a good thing so this is a perfect time to buy See you guys in the next video.